principal at White Center Heights Elementary. We're a, a neighborhood school of 400 kids, grades 6 through K through 6. White Center is in an unincorporated part of King County. It's a community of about 20,000 people. And it's a community really in change. It used to be pretty much a white working class community and has evolved over the last 20 years to be a very diverse community of mostly refugee and immigrant populations. Because this is kind of the uh, socially economically deprived neighborhood and it gets pretty rowdy down here. Shootings, everything. People stabbing people. People amazing people on the streets. Ninety percent of our kids come from Park Lake Homes Public Housing, and we are in a temporary building now, as our school was closed because of toxic mold. And finally, after four years, six years, it will be six years total. We will be back in the community in a brand new school, financed by a bond issue, which took 16 years oh, to pass. Down. So we're very excited about that possibility. 80% of our kids go home and speak a different language at home, or have parents who speak primarily a different language. And it could be one of 27 different languages. So it's a very exciting place to be, because we have a chance to really see the world in microcosm and we have a chance to really figure out how it is that we live together with a great deal of diversity and do it well. But there's some big challenges. I mean, there are so many different languages. And I think the biggest challenge is the vocabulary because the kids, they don't know just this what I would think is just the simplest word, even the, like fifth and sixth graders. And sometimes trying to explain what that word means is very difficult because they don't have the context to explain it in. I mean, Last year was my first year of teaching and I had no idea how much these kids knew. And I'll never forget that first half hour, they all looked at me just terrified and nobody said a word and I had no idea how much they understood. <laughs> and I was just dancing around nervously like a big monkey acting out everything, and about half an hour into the day, I decided we should uh, line up and go to the bathroom. And they all lined up, like perfect little obedient children, and I lined up to show them how, and when I turned around to see if everybody was behind me, they all immediately turned and faced the wall. And I thought, oh, they have no idea that we're going out of the room, they don't know what they, this, I mean, it was a real shocker. <laughs> So the biggest challenge that we face here is being able to communicate with our families. And I feel very inadequate when I'm trying to have a conversation with someone who's so desperate to tell me something. And, but we're very good at charades here. <laughs> but that's been the hardest part of this job. 89% um, of our kids qualify for free or reduced lunch, which means that out of our 400 students, we serve lunch to free to about 350 kids a day. And we have 100% of our kids qualify for free breakfast just because of the program, the way it's been set up. And we serve breakfast to about 220 kids a day. I know for a fact some of these kids aren't eating when they're not at school. And since we started the free breakfast for everybody, we used to have a lot of 10 o'clock tummy aches. And these were kids that hadn't eaten since lunch the day before. But since we started free breakfast for everybody, we don't have any more 10 o'clock tummy aches. Um, there's been cases where the kid doesn't come to school because their clothes aren't clean. They don't have yeah. clean clothes for two days. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, they're honest. I couldn't go because I didn't have any clean clothes to wear. Mm -hmm. Which is true. And that's hard. And you know, enough. anyone, if, if if someone new to just call the school, someone will go pick them up, bring them clothes, but it's, there's, a, it's hard to communicate that. And a lot of 
lot of our kids have one set of clothes. And I've had a little boy come to school twice this week in clothes that he outgrew 20 pounds ago. And I didn't have anything here for him but a pair of size 7 sweatpants that fit him tight, but at least they went on. And they can't sit and work when they can't button their pants and they're falling down at recess. In the winter they show up with, with no gloves, with no hat, with no warm jacket. I mean, it goes on and on. And those have a huge impact on what they're going to learn. If you come to school cold, sick, tired, hungry, how are you going to learn at school, you know? You know? Yeah. And then they, one day they stop coming yeah. and they're evicted. That's what living in a car, family. you know? Yeah. Wow. And they're then living in a car for like two They months. don't know where mom is, you know, you see that, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And they're just, kids are just saying it. You're, the teacher's the one who's about to start crying. Yeah, I know. <laughs> kids are telling you and you're like, you know, oh, okay, you know. But, yeah, so I think that's you know, yeah, it was just really, really sad to see her come to school, hair all, you know, doesn't shower, and she didn't shower yeah. days sometimes, and her hair is just a big ball of hair. Mm -hmm. You'd have to brush it every day. Jean would brush her hair every day, put on, you know, give her some socks and some clothing. Yeah. And even though out of a classroom of 25, just that one student, it's like a heart wrenching, you know.